it on. I got it on now, Eli. Good morning, church family. And happy Mother's Day to you for everybody here in the sanctuary and also everybody that's joined us online. I want to welcome you to Enon Baptist Church this morning and our 11 o'clock worship service. Uh, your announcements are, are in your bulletin. They're, we've been kind of displaying them, and we'll do that at the end as well. But uh, I want to just mention just a couple of things to you. First off, I want to mention, uh, let's be much in prayer for the Alan Cornelius family. Alan passed away uh, this week, and uh, let's be much in prayer for that whole family. Right now, there are no services or anything that's scheduled, but uh, it's going to be private is my understanding with the family. So let's be just much in prayer there, and if any of that changes, I promise you I'll let you know. Um, I want to, as you can tell, Ben is not here this morning. Uh, he is away uh, with a, a baby dedication in his family, but we had an awesome turnout yesterday and a fantastic day in the Lord at our car show uh, yesterday. Uh, we were joking this morning, kind of talking about the fact that Ben had about 12,000 steps in before 9 o'clock, uh, he, and then he covered another, had another five hours running hard, so uh, uh, we're grateful for him, glad he's able to enjoy a little time off this morning with his family. But he did ask if I would just to say, hey, thank you so much to all the volunteers, all the youth, all the youth parents, all the, uh, the volunteers that were so active yesterday, uh, to Brother Sam Shermer who cooked some amazing food yesterday. Like I said, it was a tremendous day in the Lord. The youth and the children's program are going to be having a cookout this coming Wednesday night uh, just to, to kind of celebrate kind of the things that God's doing there. So I uh, look forward to that. Those of you that are normally here on Wednesday night, for, for Bible study, I guess y'all are stuck with me. But uh, if you're feeling young or you're feeling like a member of the youth or the children's program and you want to go get a hot dog hamburger, I'll excuse you. How's that? <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to also say this to you. I want to say thanks to our RAs uh, who worked so hard this past Wednesday night. Uh, if you've not seen it yet, take a look at the fire pit out here to my left, your right, uh, before you leave today. Uh, those young men shoveled six tons of rock dust, and some picnic tables were donated, and uh, they did a phenomenal job fixing up our fire pit out here, and we're going to put that thing to use this year, so uh, just want to just kind of draw attention to that. If there's no, nothing further, no announcements, then I'm going to open us in a word of prayer, and I'm going to have Robin Slater come up for our Mother's Day recognition. So let's go before the throne together in prayer. Our God and our King, we've gathered this morning to worship. We have gathered to praise. And Lord God, we are so grateful for this opportunity to do just that, to praise and to worship. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would just take this time and, Lord, use it to challenge us, equip us. Lord, to remind us of who you are and whose we are. We thank you for being our God, for being our King. We love you. We seek to honor you this day. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Robin, come ahead, ma'am. Good morning. Um, what an honor and a privilege it is today to be able to honor our mothers. Um, I've just got a poem I wanted to read. It's uh, called God's Special Creation, and it's by Lenora McWhorter. The hand that rocks the cradle also makes the house a home. It is the prayers of the mother that keeps the family strong. Mother rises early in the morning and bathes her day in prayer. She talks to God about her family and places them in his care. Mother communicates her love in a thousand different ways. When there is a need, she is there, whether it is night or day. Mother seasons life with love and gives so much of herself. God placed in her the best he had and made her unlike anyone else. When challenges come our way and when trials block our view, Mother kneels down beside her bed and prays the family through. Mother is God's special creation. She is a light shining in the dark, illuminating the path for her family and pointing them toward God. And I just want to recognize all our mothers this morning. All our mothers, if you would please stand. I think we need to give them a round of applause. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord, I want to lift all the mothers up to you today. Thank you for the blessing of each and every one of them. I pray you would give them the strength to stay strong in their faith as they seek to look after their families. Be with those who no longer have their mothers with them. May you grant them precious, happy memories to remember on this day. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And, and we do have just a little token, a little gift for all the women. There's baskets um, out front in the vestibule and baskets right here in the East Hallway. And if you want to, just pick up a little gift and happy Mother's Day. Good morning. If you'd like, please stand and join us as we begin our worship with song with Surely the Present. family it's time that we worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and offerings there's offering stations throughout the sanctuary and also up in the balcony as we uh, is it Shannon or Ray one of you going to play Shannon's going to play as she plays I just encourage you to move to the, the one of those stations if you have an offering or a tithe you want to put in there let's go before God's throne together our God and our King as we bow before you through this act of worship Lord we desire to give back to you just a small portion of what you've given to us. Lord, we ask that you would take them and Lord God, you would use them for your glory and for your kingdom. For you are our God and our soon coming King. We thank you for being in this place. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.
I'm going to let you remain seated for our next song, Evidence, uh, but please sing along with us. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. good. Thank you so much. Did you enjoy that? Say amen this morning, church. Amen. Me too. That was, a, that was wonderful. Ray Hooch, you are the man. Well, Jesus is, but Ray is just, we're thankful to have him here this morning. All right. Well, church family, before we go any further this morning, let's go before God's throne together. Our God and our King. 
Lord, we praise you for the gift that this day is. We praise you for the sweet worship we have experienced. We praise you, Lord, for the evidence that is everywhere of your greatness and your power and your wisdom, your majesty, your love, your grace. We praise you for being our God, for being our King. Father, I want to praise you for all the godly women here at Eden Baptist Church. And Lord God, the great gift it is to spend time with them and to serve alongside them this morning. We've gathered first and foremost to worship. And Father, we've, we've gathered this morning to celebrate the gift that these women are. We thank you for this message. Father, as always, I ask that you'd hide me behind the cross and let every word that flows from my lips bring you and you alone glory. It is to you that we come. It's in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. While you are turning to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8, let me just say this to you. First off, happy Mother's Day. To everybody here and also everybody that's joining us online, thank you so much for being spending your morning with us. Church, I believe that motherhood is, is one of the toughest assignments that God ever gave anybody. I had the very same thing happen this morning. There were several folks in 9 o'clock service. Some of the, the young moms were saying amen. You know... The truth is, she's got to be as insightful as a psychologist, as tough as a marine, as gentle as a nurse. She's a teacher, she's a plumber, she's a carpenter, she's a policeman, she's a gardener, she's a farmer. She excels in repairing broken toys, skint knees, broken hearts, and wounded spirits. Her job requires an endless supply of energy a massive amount of patience, an iron will, and a recognition of the fact that when she gets sick, she's got to make sure she's well by the time she picks up the kids. But none of these things are as important as, important as her being a godly woman. Church mothers are truly a special creation from the Lord and the depth of a mother's love is something to behold and something to truly praise the Lord for. This world around us may be spiraling ever downward, ever out of control. It would appear in the eyes of man, but listen and hear me. God has chosen and God has set apart the Christian family. And within that family unit, God holds high the place of woman within that family unit. I want to be clear, so y'all be patient with me this morning. Mothering does not require you to have children. I learned that very, on, very early on with my daughter. My daughter Sarah taught me that. I believe that she has the greatest mom that's ever walked the face of the earth. But Sarah continually tells me how there were so many strong, faith-filled women that had such a huge impact in her life at different points in her life. And many of those women don't have children. Motherhood is a ministry of teaching. Preparing children to follow in God's way. And being that example of the love of Christ. I'll also say this to you. I'm aware that Mother's Day for some is a very, it's a very difficult time. I'm missing my mama this morning, church. I'm missing my mama bad. So y'all, just pray for me. Perhaps you are, uh, you're in a place where, like I am, you're missing your mom this morning because she's already in glory with Jesus. 
Perhaps you're a mom that's kind of feeling the pain of a, a wayward child this morning that's struggling. Perhaps there are some of you that maybe you didn't have the best mom in the world. And today's a difficult day. Some of you are feeling the loss of a child this morning. I understand that too. And then there are those moms that are single moms that are working hard all day long and then coming home to all the chores around the house and all the while trying to nurture their child in the ways of the Lord. Church family, hear me this morning. God has chosen and God has set apart the place of woman for a very special work. And the presence of a godly woman has an incredible spiritual impact, not just in her home, but in the life of everybody that she touches. All throughout Scripture, God reveals the positive impact of a, a godly, faith-filled woman in the lives of those around her. So yes, this morning, we're going to talk about and we're going to celebrate the power of a faith-filled woman. But the truth is, this message today, it applies to every woman, it applies to every man to every boy and to every girl that's under the sound of my voice. So a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the life of a faith-filled, godly woman who was struggling, and I mean really struggling. Her name was Hannah. And when I preached that sermon, God made it abundantly clear that we were to come back to this passage this morning and revisit this passage and look at her story from the viewpoint of the power of a faith-filled woman and how she impacts others in her life. You'll remember that this is the story of a man, his name is Elkanah, and my wife shared with me after I preached this message that I started out in the beginning of the message saying his name one way and then by the end of the message the Stokes County and me came out and it kind of sounded like he was from Pilot Mountain there for a little while. But the correct pronunciation is Elkanah. Elkanah married the love of his life, a woman named Hannah. Unfortunately for them, the Word makes it very clear that God had closed up her womb. She was not able to bear children. And then Elkanah, in his worldly, broke-down, busted vision and wisdom, comes up with this plan in his mind, well, the thing for me to do is just marry a second wife. So that's what he did. Now, do y'all see a problem with that logic? Yes. So his second wife, Panina, she has several children. They're all living together as a family. But Panina, seeing the way that Elkanah loves Hannah, is troubled by that. So she begins to give Hannah a hard time, just kind of needling her in the fact that she does not have children, yet Panina is able to bear children. Things kind of reach a, 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 a climax, if you will, as the family travels to Shiloh to take part in, in a religious festival. And of course, we re remember that Hannah uh, gets up and she goes to the temple. And that's where we're going to pick up in the story again today. So all that can, please stand in honor and in reverence the reading of God's inerrant and infallible word as we look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8 again together. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8 says this, Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Here it comes. Notice this church. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. 
Now Eli the priest was sitting on the tent by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. And she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord. Notice that. All the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have, notice this church, poured out my soul before the Lord. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Church family, you can be seated. So as we revisit the story of this this incredible faith-filled woman and the power that her presence had in the life of others that were around her, you remember we talked about the fact that she prayed, but I want to kind of add to that this morning just a little bit. Notice here with me verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him, notice this, give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. When we, we preach through this passage, Just a couple of weeks ago, we kind of glossed over this section, and that was intentional. For God would have us come back and kind of look at at this this vow, this commitment that Hannah makes before the Lord. I want you to notice what she is praying for, but also what she is committing to here in, in this verse. For that is what is so special right here. She's promising the Lord that she will will give her child to the Lord all the days of his life. She says here, no razor is going to come upon his head. This is commonly known as as what is the the Nazarite vow. And what essentially Hannah is committing to with her child, with, with Samuel, is that he would be totally and completely committed to the Lord. Now that Nazarite vow, it essentially has three parts. And the first is to abstain from from anything that would dull the senses, like alcohol, things of that nature, but also anything that would weaken the mind. Secondly, that they would would not cut the hair, for that, that long hair on a person that had taken the Nazarite vow was a public declaration that this person had set themselves apart that had completely committed to the Lord. This person, they also uh, would have nothing to do with anything that was, that was dead. For they were to be an example of life, not of death. Think about what Hannah is doing here. Hannah is taking the most precious gift, the the most precious thing in her life, and she's saying, hey, I'm going to give this, this child to the Lord. This is the child that she has prayed for. This is the child that she has wanted all of her life. Church, that is what faith filled people do. They give everything to the Lord. They give everything over to him. Now, before you say amen, they're too loud, let me ask you, have you done that? Think about the depth of that question. Have you given everything over to the Lord? You know, very often in the church we talk about, well, have you given your money to the Lord? Have you done that? Have you given your job, whatever that situation is, over to the Lord? Those things are important. Have you given those things to the Lord? But I want to go a little deeper. I want to say this to you. Have you given your children over to the Lord? I 
I mean truly given them over to the Lord. Have you given that situation that is in your family? You know the one I'm talking about. Have you given it over to the Lord? Have you, have you given that addiction that you think nobody knows about? God does. Have you given it over to the Lord? He would have you do that. He desires all of you. Look in verse 15 now. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit, but have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul, notice this, before the Lord. Notice how Hannah prays here. This is not empty repetition. This is not her just kind of checking something off her to-do list. Saying, well, I got that done. What's the next thing? No, she is, she is praying from her soul, from every fiber that is within her. She is praying to the Lord. Church family, hear me. God loves it when we are real. He loves it when we are real with Him. But He absolutely detests it when we just go through the motions. He desires for us to, to give Him all of us. To give Him our heart. And I say this often, but... Church family, I don't think we understand the full depth of what that means. Very often we'll give God time, occasionally. We give Him praise, occasionally. We give Him parts of ourselves, but what He desires is all of us. Our dreams our hopes, our plans. He wants it all. Why? Because His ways are just better. We just need to trust Him. He desires your heart. Have you given Him all of your heart? Let that sink in just a little bit this morning. Also, I want you to notice something here. Notice that Hannah's not just praying for something she wants either. Notice that. She's praying with a, a, a big picture mindset. My wife challenges me with this a great deal. My wife prays in this way. She's, Hannah's praying in a, a kingdom-sized prayers. Notice what she's committing to here. She's making not just her life, but she's committing to make her life, the life of her family, the life of her child, about the kingdom of God. Think about that. Think about the depth of that. She's making all her life and the life of her child that is to come about the kingdom. She's committed to this. What an amazing commitment. What a tremendous act of faith by this young woman. Maybe you're a young person sitting here in the sanctuary this morning. Maybe you're not even, even dating anybody right now, not much less married. Can I just challenge you right now to think about this moment and say, God, I want not just my life, but the life of, of, of maybe my children that are to come in the days ahead. I want it all to be about you, my whole family. I want it to be about your kingdom. Can I challenge you? To pray those kingdom-sized prayers. Now look with me in verse 19. Take your copy of God's Word. If you, you need to get it back out, go ahead. I should have told you to hang on to it. 
We're going to look in verse 19 and, and pick back up here. Verse 19 says this, But then they arose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Now the man Elkanah and his house went up to offer uh, to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, Not until the child is weaned. Then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. So Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Notice this. So Hannah's committed. Hannah's committed to, to weaning her child above all else. Even above attending the, the festival here, the religious festival. When it came time to make the annual sacrifice to the Lord, Elkanah sets out for the tabernacle, but Hannah remains behind because she's made this commitment to the Lord. And she had not yet weaned Samuel. But Hannah's committed She's committed to fulfilling her promise to the Lord. This is it's seen in, in, in the, her promise here to dedicate her son right after he has, he's been weaned. But I also want you to notice something here. How Hannah has the, the complete support from her husband in, in this decision. I want to talk to the fellows just a little bit this morning. Fellas, have you ever kind of rounded the corner and your wife has struck the pose? My wife warned me to be careful this morning so I don't get myself in trouble, so I'm going to try to tread lightly right here. But some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Where she's kind of struck the pose. You know what that, that pose looks like in your family. Where when you kind of round the corner and you come face to face with her and you realize very quickly the next words that come out of your mouth, you need to be very careful. <laughs> I don't know that that's what happens right here, but in my mind, I can picture Elkanah coming around the corner. And I can imagine him seeing his wife, her kind of striking a pose, whatever that might be, in their household. And he realizes, uh-oh, what's getting ready to come out of her mouth is something very serious right here. She's getting ready to lay some wisdom and some truth on me. And church family, that's exactly what I believe happened. She laid some wisdom on her husband. She laid some truth on him. Elkanah is not a weak husband. He's not foolish. He saw the wisdom in his wife. He recognized that God had called her to walk alongside him. I praise the Lord for the wisdom in my wife. And fellas, I know many of y'all are grateful for that, that godly wife that's in your life today. See, here's the thing. Hannah could just have made this decision, made this vow on her own. But the way the law had been written, Elkanah could have stepped in at any time and said, uh-uh, not under my roof. That's not what he did. He listened to his wife. He heard her wisdom. He saw her commitment. He knew her heart. And he trusted in her decision. He saw her passion. He saw her commitment. And he knew her to be a woman of faith and a woman of wisdom. If you have a woman in your life that is a woman of faith, whether that's your wife, whether that's your child, whether that's your sister, whether that's your mother, cherish her. Cherish her. I 
what I wouldn't give for just one more hug from my mama. I miss her. Cherish her. She's to be honored. In verse 24. <clears throat> now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls and one ephah of flour and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord. Notice the Lord here is lowercase, speaking to Eli, the high priest. I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. Notice this one's capitalized. Praying to God. For this child I prayed. Notice these words. And the Lord has granted me my petition which I ask of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. Notice that. Church family, here it is. This is this, this momentous, this amazing moment, this amazing event where Hannah and her husband Elkanah dedicate Samuel to the Lord and dedicate him to the Lord's service. Taking Samuel to Eli, Hannah reminds the high priest here, of, of that time, man, when she came into the tabernacle and when she prayed and she poured out her soul before the Lord. And she proclaims this glorious answer to her prayer. The Lord has given her this child. For this child I prayed, she boldly said. What we are seeing here is Hannah live out her devotion, live out her commitment to the Lord. Hannah has demonstrated a, a, a strong, selfless, uh, selfless devotion. She gives Samuel to the Lord. Think about what she's doing right here. She's saying, Lord... You gave me this child that I prayed for for years. And Lord, now I'm giving him to you. Going to leave him at the temple. Not to be hers anymore. But to belong to the Lord. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Listen to me. I don't care how old your child is. They are a gift from the Lord. They were His first. Just whoever you are, kind of take that into your heart. They're His first. He's got them. He's got them right here in His hand. Just hear that this morning. What we're seeing here from Hannah is she's living out her devotion to the Lord. See, it's one thing to say, well, I love the Lord, I serve the Lord, but it's a whole nother to live out that devotion in our words and in our actions, letting our life actually prove it. He proved his commitment to us, didn't he, church? Yeah, at the cross. Hannah is showing her devotion to the Lord by honoring him, by keeping her word. She had promised to present Samuel before the Lord so that he could live in the sanctuary and in the presence of the Lord forever. 
that, that phrase, before the Lord, it's, it's one of the most extraordinary statements made about the life of Samuel. Samuel was to live before the Lord forever. And church, that's exactly what he did. He served the Lord with a fire. He served the Lord with a passion. He was a man of spotless character and integrity. His his commitment and obedience was unparalleled, so much so that he was remembered in in the, the hall of fame, if you will, from Hebrews chapter 11. He was a spiritual counselor to kings. He was the last of the judges and the first of the prophets. And it all started with the prayer and the faith of a godly woman. Such a powerful, dynamic example of what being a woman of faith actually looks like. Is the life of Hannah. And when she made a promise to the Lord, she kept it. She did exactly what she said. Her word was her bond. She was faithful to the Lord. And her faithfulness, think about this. Her faithfulness is what now we are studying thinking about, meditating on thousands of years later. Such is the power of a faith-filled godly woman. I want to challenge every one of you to think about that. I want to challenge you to let God speak to your heart. Regardless of whether you're a man or woman, let him speak to your heart about your life right here, right now. What needs to change? Whether you're here in the sanctuary or sitting on your living room couch, what needs to change? The power of a Godly, faith-filled child of God is enormous. Not only in our households, but in everybody that we touch. For those of you that have joined us online, I want to speak to you just a moment and say this to you. If we can be of service to you, here at Amen Baptist Church, we desire to do that. Don't hesitate to give us a call. The number is on the Facebook page or the website. We thank you for joining us this morning. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Have a blessed day.